Mark Kermode is here early. Good Hello. afternoon. Early? Well, early. It was the time I said I was going to be here. Uh, well, that's true, and he's in early because, uh, we'd like to say, Willem Dafoe is actually here and he's in the studio. Willem, how are you? Good. Great I thanks. said hello to Willem just a few moments ago during the news. I said, Mark will be with us shortly. You'll, you'll spot him because he thinks it's 1955. Yeah. And how accurate Did was that? Did you spot me? <laughs> Pretty close. Very good. Uh, <laughs> how would you describe uh, the look of our good doctor oh. here? Is that how we're going to start? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's probably how we're going to continue, <laughs> Willem, so get used to it. Welcome to Radio 5. You're looking even more 1955 than normal. I should confess, actually, that several years ago, I did try to look like you. Oh, my God. Because I went to see, uh, you know, uh, you in the movies, and I thought, okay, he looks really cool. I want to get, there was a point when you had a kind of, you know, oh, yeah. uh, you, and I, so I did do for a little while, can I look like Willem Dafoe in the, but I don't Which know. Which Willem Dafoe were you trying to look like? The Willem Dafoe in, you know, yes, it was, you know. Last uh, Temptation I, I don't of Christ? Know, yeah, no, I wasn't going for the Last Temptation look, but I don't have the cheekbones for it. I have the hamster cheeks. You have the you have the cheekbones. That's the thing. So Antichrist is uh, Willem's movie, which you may well have read about. Opens in cinemas on the twenty fourth uh, of July, and one of the uh, we have followers on Twitter. Do you Twitter? At all, I, I don't. I think you should anyway. Uh. One of the people that follow Mark and me on Twitter said this morning. Now look, Willem played Christ in the Last Temptation right. of Christ. Now he's the Antichrist. He should right. make his mind up. Uh, Which I thought, oh, you must be the only person, I think, who sort of fulfilled both roles. Anyway, just expla explain well, the he's type. Not the, he's not the... I know. Yeah, 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 okay, no, fine, no, I know. Yes, the, Antichrist, it, it's a catchy title. Okay, it could there be anything. No, it, it, well, could be, it could be... Maybe too. it has something to do with Lars reading uh, Nietzsche's Antichrist. Maybe it has to do with it being a catchy title. Maybe it has to do with... Lars talks about the world that he makes in this movie is a world that's uh, a nature that's created by the devil rather than God, so... A okay. malevolent nature. Right. So this is Eden gone mad. That's it? right. So exp uh, so explain who you are. You're not the Antichrist, as as we've established no. already, uh, unless we've missed that. No, you're confusing that with the omen, Simon. Yes. Totally different. Uh, Small uh, kid. Okay. Yes. The thing that confused me was the title of the film. Yes. Anyway, so Willem, just ex so just okay. explain the story. Um, there's a couple. They're grieving after the death of their young son in an accident. Uh, he, kind of pulls himself together. She remains in this terrible depression. He happens to be a therapist, and he's very frustrated that uh, he, she can't be shaken out of this uh, anxiety, this depression, and he decides to take her to a little retreat, their cabin in the woods, and try to heal her. And uh, her cabin things don't go so crucially, well. Crucially, she had time on her own with the child who has died, which is very That's important. That's right, yeah. very crucial. I just didn't want to confuse things. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. That is very okay. important. Right. So people listening to that description will try and marry that film that you're talking about right. with the film that they have read about. Right. Which, uh, as you know, people had, uh, when it went to Cannes, it got booed and got laughed at and got applause at the end as well. But it had a whole variety of reaction. And uh, let's be upfront about it. Uh, genital mutilation is uh, in there. Scenes of. Uh, how would you describe the mark torture? I, I think you've just, yeah. I, I, th I think you've you've pretty much hit the nail on the head with the first phrase. I don't think there's really okay. any way you can go from there. No, that's true. You've okay. gone up to eleven in terms okay. of the description already. Given that it involves some of that, I mean, a lot of the attention has focused on that, which you must have known, Willem, when you were involved in the movie. Have people got the wrong end of the stick or not? Well, even that, even that sounds the wrong kind of phrase <laughs> to be using. Uh, anyway. You know, that's not what the movie is. Those are very uh, extreme details in the movie that help kind of connect the audience with what these people are going through. It's, um, we're not used to seeing these things in movies, at least not a movie like this that has content and isn't just a movie that means to titillate. Um, so it's an uncomfortable feeling some of the, seeing some of these things, so everybody goes when they don't give a very, very thoughtful account of the movie, that's what they go to. But I think the movie is so much more than that, and I think those scenes are very important to make the other part, the body of the movie, stick. So if that's not what the movie yeah. is about, you would say the movie is essentially about what? It's uh, Grief? You know, it, yeah, it's a meditation on guilt, grief, um, where our, how our mind deals with uh, fear and how where your mind goes to that dark place and you start to believe things that are beyond your experience. You tend to, you know, you catastrophize, you start to basically slip over the dark side. Mm. And it's about misogyny, very, very openly about misogyny. I don't agree. Misogyny. I don't agree. 
You don't think it's about misogyny? I didn't say it's misogynist. I said it's about misogyny. Um, I think it deals with, you know, a certain kind of tension uh, between the sexes, but I'm not sure it's about misogyny. I don't the know. Charlotte Gainsbourg character is doing a dissertation on um, gi- ginocide. Right. And uh, her, the, the, her, the center of her Genocide thesis... Ginocide being... Well, the extermination of women. She's doing a thesis about the way in which women have been mistreated over the years, particularly by religion. And uh, I, I don't want to talk beyond that right. because actually I don't want to give any support. But it, I think one of the things it is about is about misogyny. For you, fine. You know, I think a, a movie like this is going to mean different things sure. to different people. Uh, it's that complex. It's that rich. And OK, I can't say no. That's not what occurs to me. For would, example, like the fact that she yeah. has that study to me is like a shorthand that she's a uh, progressive um, intellectual uh, feminist leaning student it's mm-hmm. not specifically no no sure sure okay but I also think it's important I mean if you know we see Lars von Trier is very interesting to me because I've had, I have a strange relationship with Lars von Trier's films I, I, I hated Breaking the Waves I got thrown out of the idiots at Cannes for shouting at the screen in very bad French I really liked Dogville and I think that the key to understanding Lars for me is funny, we had Paul Bettany on the programme talking about Dogville, is that what he does is he takes an idea and he runs with it. And the, the mistake with Von Trier is to believe anything he, he says, either on or off screen, is meant absolutely. I think he is a, an absolute prankster. I have to say, right at the beginning, I think that, um, that Antichrist contains some of his best work. I mean, I think there are things in Antichrist that I really like. There are bits in Antichrist that I want to go, oh, Lars, for heaven's sake. But there are things in it. Are they, are they the bits where everyone else would be going? Well, funny oh, enough, no. no I, mean, I don't want to see that. The, 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 the interesting thing to say is because because you brought it up, and quite rightly so, it's a film about ideas. It's not a film about physical torture. It's a film about ideas. And in the end, I think those those things that happen are about those ideas. But I just think the important thing with Von Trier is never to take his ideas at I, face value. I think this movie is special. You have to give it a special criterion uh, uh, in his work. This is a much more personal film. It's a much more sincere film. I know what you're saying about him being a prankster. He plays with ideas. He plays with film language. He plays with way, different ways of telling a story. Mm-hmm. But this one is very close to him emotionally. And he, he, it comes from a very vulnerable place. So I don't think he's glib or playing with people. He's playing, you're right, he's playing with ideas. But it's all hung on a kind of poetry and a kind of uh, dreamlike uh, reality that... He knows so yes. deeply. So my experience of working with him was here, here was a guy that was, this, this was like a, a wonderful collaboration because he really needed us. He was very vulnerable. And this is very sincere uh, material. I mean, he's, I he, he says he I'm wrote certain. this no, out, okay. out of depression. I mean, he, a few years ago he was very depressed and he, yeah, and he, and he was, wrote this as a yeah, form but of therapy. Of it, he's always he was still, a, you know. It's true. This is him, but he's very phobic. I mean, he talks about it freely, so we can, yeah. and that's part of it. But um, it, during the film, we really there was a tension that we might not finish the film. And that's how, what kind of anxiety, mm-hmm. is, what kind of anxious state he was in sometimes. That does something really particular to the relationships between an actor and a director and creates a kind of um, commitment that's kind of extraordinary. So when, when anyone kind of says that he's, you know, a prankster or a jokester, as far as this, I, I don't buy it. Well, I think that there is a, a difference in, um, in the way that you... I mean, for example, I think that the sincerity in the film comes from your performance from Charlotte Gaines, but I think those performance are absolute, uh, performances are completely heartfelt. And actually, I think they're one of the reasons why the movie works in certain places where you think it wouldn't. Because, in fact, for the, for the bulk of the film, I mean, the great substantial part of the running time, it is a film about a couple attempting to overcome grief. Now, the later moments, so we haven't seen those things before, but obviously there are references to I know Corrida. I mean, that, that's the kind of tradition that he's gesturing towards. But actually, for the great part of it, it is an, an emotional film about grief and loss. And I think the power of that comes from the performances. I don't think I'll ever get to the point that I will be, be able to take anything that Von Trier does or says absolutely at face value because I have had so much experience of, of, of him in the past talking to actors who've worked with him talking to people who he's driven completely mad you know when he was doing Dancer in the Dark and his leading lady just said he was it's emotional pornography and then talking to you know Paul Bettany but I think that there is a quality of the film in that first movement that I haven't seen in his other work and I and and actually, that's why I think that that stuff is some of his best work. And I think in the in the, the latter section, in the stuff which has raised the controversy, I don't have a problem with it. I really genuinely don't have a problem with it because 
although there are moments in it which you go, come on, Lars. It, it does make sense in and of the world of the film itself. Also, Lars said something very funny about it, which was that he said, I'm the best filmmaker in the world. I just don't know that God is the best God in the universe, <laughs> which I think you know, is a classic Von Trier.